you know, I have just killed my son and my, ah, uh, it was the amount of shame and guilt and self-loathing that I went through was tremendous. I hated my partner, uh, I hated my life, I hated my circumstances, and I hated myself. Welcome to the very first episode of season two of Stigma, the show where we talk about things that no one really wants to talk about. The show where we share stories that no one really wants to hear. But more importantly, the show where we empower voices that need to be heard. This is Stigma. And on our very first episode of this season, I have got with me the wonderful Kumudini Pereira. Hi, Kumu. Hi. Thank you very much for joining me on this show. Thank you for having me. So, Kumu, you're here to share something mm -hmm. about your life uh, with me and with our audience here at the wonderful Taj Samudra Hotel. So, what do you want to tell me? You've had a very particular experience yes. that you wanted to share with us. Yes, about abortions. Yes. Right? And uh, Have you had an abortion? Yes, I have. I've had two. Two abortions. I've had two abortions. Both abortions were after my first child was born. Um, this was during, I was roughly, I think about 29, 30 years old at that time. Um, it was right after um, my first marriage ended and my son was very small um, and I got into a relationship with a guy who, eh, who you say was a rebound um, <laughs> and uh, the abortions were carried out under duress by me. I when not. you say you carried out those abortions under duress, what do you mean? I didn't want to have the abortions. Okay, so you didn't want to have the abortions? No, I didn't. Who I made didn't. you have it? My partner did at that, that time. Why? He is from the Middle East. Uh, his family is from the Middle East and from a particular region in the Middle East where things like these, um, having a child out of wedlock can actually get you killed. Right, um, and that was the argument that was used with me, saying, "Look, if you have this child, I might be killed." Was uh, what I was told. So, because I can be very stubborn, um, and when I put my foot down, um, I had put my foot down and said, "Look, I don't care whether you are going to be in my life." I will raise the child, I will look after him. That was the fact that I was already a single mom. Right? You and already had a child. I had a child. Okay. And that but when was you also took used. that decision as someone who's already a mother and you were very conscious and aware that you were carrying another child in you, when you took the decision that you were going to have an abortion, how did that make you feel? Horrible. I, uh, as a mom, so I mean, one, uh, being very, very pragmatic has always helped me through situations like this. You know, I've, I've dealt with difficult situations all my life, but the salient points was I have a son. I have to make sure his welfare is priority. Um, because he's already alive and my second child is still not yet, you know, out. And uh, can I conceivably afford to have a second child? Can I support him? More than everything else, giving birth to the child and going through the whole infant stage where the mother, mother's presence is absolutely necessary. I couldn't afford to take a year or a year and a half off from my life to be a mother of an inst infant without the quality of life of my all my dependents. All my, my entire family were my dependents at that time. So there were seven people, including me, who were, um, I was supporting. And that one and a half years would have 
quite literally you know could have driven us onto the street due risk by your partner and also due risk of your the circumstances, circumstances yeah. you know and it was a difficult choice because sometimes people who are against abortion propagate this narrative that if you legalize abortion somehow women are just going to be deciding to have abortions all the really? time yes. and that is such a light and easy decision to make but you're saying it wasn't easy of for you of course not i i was already a mom and i love my son i would give my life for my son and if another child came into place i would have had to do the same but my second child would have his father would have not wanted him he would have completely struck out from every uh, everything else because his father was not sri lankan uh, sri lanka has no support for single moms at all we have no support from society no no support from uh, there's no social services so so to speak that we can rely on the other side you know the people who say you know bring the child give birth to the child and put it up for adoption right i'd like to challenge those people to actually go see the state of children in orphanages and actually have a look at what our adoption rates are like and how ridiculous our adoption laws are i want you to think about you know after you made that difficult decision of having an abortion and then you walked into that clinic what was that experience like um scary it was scary and uh, everything in me my instincts were screaming run um but hey so it was dirty it was dungy it was um, it 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 looked like it was some it was a place that was hidden from the light i mean it's illegal so it looked like it was um, something that that was put together in a hurry uh with not much care there was one assistant i don't know whether the lady was a nurse or not but i do remember she was very uncaring and you know sort of the the, the impression i got was you know get on with it you know? did she or the doctor Uh, give you any counseling no, before no, no. what counseling no um you walked in you said you're there for an abortion well my my partner at that time who you know wanted me to get do it was had already discussed the details and what not with this person so i was just taken in by him and led to a room there was uh the something was inserted into me who inserted the doctor yeah the doctor or someone in certain did he was, brief you about the procedure beforehand ah uh, and you will start bleeding in few hours it will it might be painful take two panadols and you will be fine pretty much it was briefing that i got there was no instructions on after care if there was an injury nothing would you call this experience unsafe of to course you? well I mean it's definitely if I had to go through an abortion where you know the child had to be sucked out of me I probably would have put my foot down and said no right ah uh, for one I know um that those scenarios are far more dangerous than a tablet being inserted into me and a, an abortion being induced is one thing as opposed to some uh, you know a machine being put inside and vacuuming things out is another thing entirely that i would have i don't know how but i probably would have said absolutely no to you know, so yeah. it was painful it was you, you still had to pass everything you know from your vagina opening and it's painful it's like um, and you bleed for quite a while What did you feel when you were going through that process and after that process immediately after while you were bleeding one there is absolute desolation 
you know that you are killing your own child right you are, i have just killed my son and my ah uh, it was the amount of shame and guilt and self loathing that i went through was tremendous i hated my partner uh, i hated my life i hated my circumstances and i hated myself um but at the same time while those feelings were in me there was also a feeling in me thinking i don't have to find resources to feed another mouth harsh but still true why did you have this guilt that you thought you were killing your child and you carried this shame uh, over a decision which you made well i had already i said we put it this way right when when my son um i was pregnant with my son during my first marriage i had formed an intent intense relationship with this being inside me um i was told we were told that every scan we had we were told that the child is a girl but i had already started connecting with this being inside me and that the the thought of snuffing out that essence that life uh was terrible i kept praying for forgiveness and apologizing to him and to god and i already knew it was a child it was a boy are you a religious person i am okay religious in the sense i am spiritual i believe in god i don't believe in religious institutions and your spiritual relationship with god or a higher power how do you think that impacted your healing and recovery from abortion well or if you punished yourself how did how did you how did it impact how you punished yourself? so the punishing of myself and this was more the case of i felt i had given up the right to ever be a mother to another child ever again right um and i was okay with that i find it so interesting because you know you you described your the abortion that you had as killing a life taking away a child um a sin or more something which you punished yourself for mm. this is of course uh, a narrative and a theme mm. which is mm. often used by people who are against abortion mm. and pro against life. the choice of of women to have an abortion are pro life what would you tell another woman who wants to have an abortion uh, would have, you call her a murderer would no. you tell her she doesn't have the right to do that absolutely not i have up to date um i am known and i have had a number of people couples contact me saying they need to now get uh, get rid of an unwanted pregnancy and i would never put that on another woman um because that was my burden alone to bear and that was something that something i inflicted on myself it's not something that i would ever tell another person you know you're committing a sin um and i don't essentially think it is right now that i have processed the trauma and i have been able to think about it in a rational logical way i no longer think that i am you know a murderer or murderess whatever i think i did what was the only rational logical thing to do at the time i honestly think now that i but i i did what was best for me and the dependence that i had at that time do you have an idea of the number of abortions that take place a day in sri lanka not really no what is it do you yes it's between 700 to 1000 a day a day wow this is in a country where abortions are illegal 
and therefore women are putting themselves through a process which is unsafe. That's about 365,000 women a year are putting their lives at risk to access unsafe abortions. Within 10 years, that's 3.6 million women. And that's because we have laws here which still criminalize abortion. Even if you are raped, even if you're a child, you're forced to go through that pregnancy. What do you think about laws like that? Do, have, has anyone ever done a comparison between countries that have legalized abortion and Sri Lanka? Have we, has, has there ever been a comparison done? I mean, there have been studies done on countries which have legalized abortion and whether that leads to an increase. Has in, there been? It hasn't. Okay, so then you can't, we can't logically say that, you know, legalizing abortion will increase it. As you said, there's already people who are doing, carrying out abortion. So that basically tells me that the powers that be, as long as they are not asked to take responsibility for the lives of these women they are okay with it you not know, carrying on but they don't want to do anything to make, to make it the, safe for them make, make, so they don't essentially they don't care right that that is that's the message that i get i had to at one point actually weigh the pros and cons of becoming a prostitute right because being Prostitution is one of the best ways of raising cash fast. Unfortunately, right? But I had to weigh the pros and cons. It, I weighed against it. But it was something that I actually weighed. And there are plenty of women who do that. Have you told other people you've had an abortion? Yes, I have. How have people responded? Oh, I've got... Many people have, you know, tried to tell me that, you know, you are, you are a bird, you, you, you killed your own child, God will punish you, you will go to hell, you will, you know, blah, 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 and like, yeah, okay. I'm okay with going to hell. It is a decision that I took on. I am not okay with having brought a child to life and consigning that child to hell on earth by going for, by him or her being put through the um, orphanage and child care system that we have in Sri Lanka. That no. I would never do that. If you look back at the Kumu, who you were at 29, would you have made a different decision? No. No. I would have made, if I had to do it now, one, I would have kicked the man out the door because obviously definitely not a keeper that one um, so I wouldn't put myself into that situation but that is the <laughs> the luxury of hindsight and experience uh, knowing you know who to have in your life but uh, if I was that person I I would help the Kumu at that time and I would be there with her through the process what would you tell her that you are doing the right thing. You are taking the logical choice. Right? You have, you are making the right choice for yourself and your child and your dependents. That it's going to be okay. Yeah. Kumu, thank you so much for like sharing this really emotional uh, and powerful story. Not many women actually want to come forward and share a story as intimate and as traumatic as having an abortion. Yeah. And that's because of all the reasons which you spoke about today, uh, the guilt, the shame, uh, the feeling that you murdered your child. And it is so, so difficult. But it was also so warming to see you acknowledge that that experience you had does not mean that other women should not have autonomy over their body. Thank you so much, Kumu. Thank you, and really, I'm really grateful for you. Thank you.
Thank you for, for having this conversation. I mean, not many people will do that. So thank you.